So, uh, anyone that's been on Facebook lately has noticed that there has been a significant increase in posts about uh, the EcoDiesel engines failing, um, specifically bearing failures, and they have all been bearing failures. Matter of fact, they are all bearing failures. Every one of these engines has a bearing failure or bearing related failure. We told you over a year ago now that the engine failure was due to low RPM lugging of the crankshaft, uh, which uh, would flex, take out the bearings, take the crank out. Um, this is partially true. It is an issue. It does cause part of the problems, but we've dug dip deeper into it and the main issue is the line bore of the crankshaft itself. All the holes do not line up with each other perfectly, which in turn puts added pressure and added stress on the crankshaft, uh, typically right around uh, where connecting rod four and connecting rod five bolt to the crankshaft. And typically the crank will break around that area if it does break or it'll throw rod four or rod five or the bearings around four or five. Uh, I've pulled apart five motors recently and they've all had connecting rod failures um, in the exact same spot, four or five or both. Um, I did pull apart one yesterday that was a little bit different. Uh, now the motor had been sitting a while, it's dirty, it's hard to fully tell, um, but the oil galleys had shit in them, not all of them, but the crank had crap physically in one of the oil galleys uh, right around the second cap, or it doesn't have caps because it's a cradle, but right around where the, you would call the second cap, uh, there was something lodged in the crankshaft there. Uh, not exactly sure how it got there or whether it was just from the engine sitting over time. Um, I sent them to the machine shop with the crank in them still. Um, so I didn't have the time to um, pull out what was in there and dig into it a little bit deeper. Um, but that specific engine um, had a rod failure um, on connecting rod four and it had a main bearing failure on the first what you'd consider the first cap, right at the front of the motor. You, when you took the timing cover off, you could physically see the bearing was blown out. So with that being said, if you're watching this video because you have an engine that has failed, do not take it apart, slot bearings in it, and put it back together. The engine will fail again. Do not let a shop rebuild your truck and do the exact same thing. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, shit, I'm spending all this money on this truck. I just want to throw some bearings in it, put it back together and sell it. Well, it, fine, but then it doesn't help the next guy. Now, a lot of you are like, well, fuck the next guy, but come on, do it the right way if you're gonna spend the money on it. For those of you who need an engine rebuilt or want to buy a rebuilt engine, or even want to sell a core engine, get a hold of me. Um, we have five engines in my shop right now being worked on. Um, and we're continuing to take in engines from around the country for other customers. And okay, so ignore this. Um, what you have here is I just moved into this shop and we are trying to figure out storage, right? So look, there's an EcoDiesel engine. Look, there's an EcoDiesel engine. Look, there's an engine completely torn apart in pieces, okay? Now, with that being said, a lot of people, they worry, especially about motors like this, these, I don't wanna say high-end motors, but they're expensive and they're very finicky. So, the block is going to machine shop. Machine shop is fixing 100% of the factory issues. We are fixing the line bore. We are fixing everything that we can find. Cleaning up the block. We are trying to make everything back to stock. We, if the crank has damage, the crank will be properly chromed and repolished or reground down to where it goes. We're not taking it apart and throwing big dumb bearings in it or anything weird like that. Uh, it is going to be done the right way. All of that is going to be fixed. We're going to use as much new parts as possible. We're going to be TIG welding the timing gears so that the timing gears do not slip. 
Um, we're gonna be making modifications more than likely to the oil pump in order to cre increase oil pressure. So when the engines leave here, the engines will not only be reliable, but you don't have to worry about bottom end failures in 50,000 miles or less. Um, and we have options for other things that people want. We are gonna be sending heads out and having heads completely gone through, uh, flowed, built, everything. We're gonna have turbos built. So for those of you who are wanting a motor and are like, you know what? I'm already spending the money on the motor. Maybe I should get a little bit more performance out of it. Let me know because there's all the options and the, all the ability in the world to make a hell of a lot more power on these engines reliably. Um, so that's gonna be one of the next big things. Um, so right now the blocks are going to machine shop. Machine shop is fixing all the issues, repairing anything wrong with them, replacing anything that needs to be replaced. They're getting cleaned. They're getting magnafluxed. They're getting honed. Everything is getting checked. They're coming back. The engines are going to be completely assembled. Everything is gonna be clean. Everything is gonna be put together like it should. Everything is going to be spec'd out properly. Everything is gonna be lubed properly. Every motor is gonna come with instructions on how to take care of it, how to put it together, everything. Everything is gonna be, so that way when a customer gets the motor back, customer can say, hey, I need to use this oil for this many miles. I need to check this, this, and this. And it is 100% worth following in order to keep your truck on the road as long as possible. Um, we're still working on the CP3 conversion. Uh, that is a little bit different because that requires some modified fuel lines, uh, but that should be done hopefully as well soon. We literally have a test engine right here. This is a bad engine and it is in freaking great shape, but it is a bad engine. And so I'm actually gonna leave this engine together right now and we are going to be building parts on it test flange, right? Uh, hood stack. So we're gonna be building a hood stack. Um, after the hood stack, we are going to be building um, a couple different turbo kits on here. Um, one to possibly relocate the stock one, not fully sure I wanna do that, but we're gonna be doing a big single. Um, we're gonna be trying uh, to do a couple different uh, variable vane turbos off of other trucks to see if we can put a slightly larger variable vane turbo on there uh, and have less EGT problems, be able to make more power uh, and make the engine more reliable. So I know this video rattled on. Uh, you guys obviously came to check out bearing issues. Um, you know what? Let me, uh, let me put a glove on here and I'll show you guys some of the problems. Okay, so here we go. These are rods out of the same motor. This is a good rod, okay? Notice the color on it, okay? Nice gray all the way through. This is a bad rod. Okay, what you see here is a bearing that's completely toast. And if you notice the color, notice that the rod is black and the rod is burnt. These rods, all six of these, now there's two of these that are bad like this for this one engine. All six of these will be going to the machine shop together and they will all be checked together. And then if these ones can be repaired, they will be repaired. If they cannot be repaired, they will basically, the rod will be taken off and the rod will be scrapped, the piston will be kept, um, and they will go into, onto a shelf as extra parts um, for motors that come in where they blew parts apart or whatever, so that way, um, no matter what, there's always parts. Like, I don't expect every one of these core motors to come in to be usable. You know, one of them might have a crank that's busted in half and tore the whole block up. So, you know, we pray and hope and wish that every customer that sends us a motor, stop, shut their truck off before it got that late, but you never know. So um, if anybody would like to see more videos on when the actual rebuild process works or once we have like the clean room built, uh, please get a hold of me uh, and I'll see what I can do.